Good evening, everybody. This is a Roaming Prepper channel, and I'm your host, Pete. And let me get some better lighting here. Uh, this is a one of those late night reading and studying kind of nights, and I uh, thought I'd jump on and share a video with all of you. So it's crunch time. Um, as of the date of this video's posting, uh, the election will be less than a week away. And what do I think is going to happen once everything's said and done? Well, I'll be right back. And let's talk about just my opinion and my take. And you can take it or leave it, but just my opinion. Now, for those of you who have not been here before, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm the Roaming Prepper. I go by Pete. Uh, for those of you who have not uh, liked and subscribed, please do so. If you really don't like what I'm saying, you could dislike. That's fine, too. Whatever floats your boat. I get the occasional poop emojis and toilet emojis and whatever, so that's fine. Um, in any case, so it's crunch time. As of the date I post this, uh, it will likely be less than a week to Election Day 2024, and people are going to ask, well, what's going to happen? I think there are a lot of folks who are concerned about the general instability. Um, as someone who's seen his fair share of elections at this point in his life, I can tell you that they seem to be more and more unsettling over the last 15, 20 years, I don't know, take uh, how, how you far back you want to go. Um, granted, there were some contentious elections and protests and fights back in the Vietnam era. And, you know, uh, before that, obviously, the Civil War didn't go very well back in the 1800s. But lately, it seems to be building ahead of steam where we have a lot of people getting very passionate and then becoming belligerent with other people. And I think social media had a lot to do with this. So the social media allowed people to be horrendous to other people and not directly have to face them for the most part, nor did they have to reveal who they were. They could be anonymous. They could um, make up a name on the internet, you know, John McMuffin, and proceed to go out and be horrendous to someone. I also think unfortunately and indirectly, social media and the internet, which has provided us unlimited opportunities to learn and grow and to communicate with people different from us, has also given voice to the worst of our society. And in doing so, has made our society a little less awesome than it should be. Um, every society has its ups and downs, so I guess it is what it is. Everyone deals with the issues of their time. So what do I expect, me personally, going into election day? Um, we've already seen, as of the day I'm recording this, somebody just burned some ballot boxes, like their mailboxes, but for your ballots in Oregon, which is kind of funny because it was in Portland, where if it was a leftist who did that, that's stupid because it's probably left-leaning votes. Even if it was a right-wing person who did it, it's not going to change anything. So it's absolutely pointless. Like, you know, if a Republican was like, oh, I don't want them to vote, it doesn't matter. The whole city is going to be blue anyway. Why the hell did you commit arson on a single post office box? Like, ballot box is not going to do anything. Unfortunately, to my earlier reference of the worst of society, these times give purpose and cause and voice, not just to the those of us who may have been marginalized or, or didn't have a voice, but it gives a voice to a lot of people who really don't need to be talking. What I suspect is going to happen is you're going to see a lot of localized nonsense. You're going to see people having fights in the polls, protesting, no matter who wins, someone's going to be pissed off. Now, me personally, I think you're more than likely to see riots from the left and the right. Then again, the right didn't disappoint because they rioted at the Capitol, which was always interesting. But the bottom line is you look at 2020, the damn country was on fire. There were fires and riots everywhere. You haven't seen that yet. There hasn't been a big, crazy movement. And I think a lot of it is due to people are hurting. People didn't like, they were convinced they didn't want one person and they voted for the other person. Things got markedly worse. 
uh, economically for sure. Some people say geopolitically it's better. I, I don't know. You you take it how you will. I know what my thoughts are. But the bottom line is, are you going to see those big protests? I don't think so. What I fear, there are two things I fear that really bother me that we all need to prepare for. One is localized violence, right? Somebody doesn't like the outcome, so they go and shoot up, hurt, bomb, or otherwise um, agitate someone else and cause problems. Um, the other thing that bothers me, and it's in, not necessarily in the Republican or Democrat interest to have it happen, but it would be in the interest of international players, is to have something horrendous, i.e. a terror attack. Now, they've already arrested one international uh, migrant who apparently had been an interpreter for the U.S. military, the CIA, I hear different variations of it, who was in the country planning to commit a mass shooting or bombing on Election Day. That's the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night because it's hard to predict, and one to four people can do an immense amount of damage. If Charlie Hebdo attacks in France, the 2008 stuff in... Um, in uh, Mumbai, or any indication, uh, a small group of people with a half-decent plan and an ability to execute can do a lot of damage. And Hamas's attack on Israel, whether you think Mossad turned the blind eye or not, um, they didn't crash all their ultralights. They landed correctly and then went and attacked people. Those are the kind of things that would be very bad. That would shut down, possibly shut down an election, certainly disrupt the country. So how do we prepare for this? We don't control any of this. And, you know, one shouldn't be fear-mongering, hiding under your bed. I don't intend to. I tend to be out doing what I do, whether it's my work or whether it's with my wife or with the potatoes, walking my corgis down the street. I intend to go about my life. But what I do plan to do is the following. I'm going to change out all my potable water. I have drinking water in five gallons. I have a bunch of those. I have bottled water, like normal bottles, and I have the blue cubes, you guys know what I'm talking about, with potable water. Every six months, I pour them out, refill them, and what I did on each container, I laminated the ratio of water to clear bleach for different percentages of bleach on the side of the container. That is my potable water. That is for washing hands, hygiene, flushing, toilets, uh, doing laundry if need be, and even taking baths. And I have so many gallons of those stored in the garage. Then I have other versions of water for drinking, which are more purified. At the end of the day, the potable water is going to be tap water anyway. I have a whole home a filtration and a water softener. So can I drink it? Absolutely. Will it kill me? No. Is it great? Oh, God, no. It's awful. The water out here is terrible. It's really hard water. But I'm going to have that water ready in case there's a disruption of water. I have my jackeries. I'm going to go check the generator this weekend. Turn it on, leave it running, plug a few things in, make sure it outputs the way it's supposed to. Check the oil, check the fuel, make sure I have gas for the generator. I'm going to top off the tank in the truck. I'm going to do common sense things. I'm going to make sure we have dry goods. We have the ready wise stuff. You guys know I work with them a lot. I have new, uh, nutrient survival stuff. I even have some old wise and, and um, mountain house stuff. And I still have a couple of old cases of MREs, which should be good. I opened one the other day and I was still able to eat it. It didn't kill me. So I'm going to have some food. What is my plan? If there's a disruption, in the streets, I want to be able to hunker down at home and not have to go anywhere. If there's a larger issue and they take out water or power, I want to be able to function for at least three to four days. Normally, first responders, National Guard, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, are going to focus on infrastructure and general welfare, and then they'll start going into individuals to take care of people. So my goal, at least in the short term, if there's a disruption. Now, Truthfully, I'm going to do this anyway. I choose to do it right before the election seasons because I know how people get. And you know what? Yeah. Every six months, I repeat the process just to make sure my equipment is good. It still turns on. It still takes charge. And I have fresh water. And in the event something happens, I know in the back of my mind, I've at least taken some steps to keep my stuff ready. 
for something to happen if it does. If I have to hunker down at the house for a day or a week or a month, we're not going to be in a big bind doing so. And of course, if you're out and about, situational awareness, if you can carry or have any other defensive measures, do so. If you have defensive training, martial arts, keep up with that. Keep fit, keep healthy. And like I always say, wear lace-up shoes in case you got to run away from something. Hell, the mall could catch fire because of an accident. And guess what? You're going to have to run away from the fire. So folks, do I intend to panic? No, not really. Do I intend to be ready? Yes. And what I'm doing, I'm using my six-month prep check where I check water generators, et cetera, et cetera. But I placed it before hurricane season and six months later before election time and before the holidays hit. So I know in the back of my mind, if I have friends, family over, whatever is going on during the holidays, even if nothing happens during the election, we're ready. And you should be doing this anyway. So anyway, folks, I'm going to leave you with that. Not a mes message to fear monger. Be ready. Be smart. And uh, you should be doing this stuff anyway. So take some time this weekend. Top off the tank. Make sure you have what you need. And uh, I'll see you next week. And we'll see how the, uh, how the election turns out. Because it'll definitely be exciting. You guys be good. Be safe out there. And take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm.